this first unit is about plant diversity and we will see the morphological features of flowering plants a plant diversity it means now in our environment we see a wide variety of plants and they all don't look the same they differ from each other in many aspects and this plant diversity is invaluable because it balances ecosystems provides shelter for animals moderates climates etc so when we see the morphological features of plants um, there are many differences and though there are many types of plants differing in size the environment where they grow whether they produce flowers or not but all the plant parts of the plant of a flowering plant is the same so according to the feature whether the plant produces flowers or not they are divided into two as flowering plants and non flowering plants now in this you can see the shoe flower plant which is a good example of a flowering plant and this is cycas which is a non flowering plant here you can see the main parts of a flowering plant the flowering plants the parts are same but they may vary in size so the common parts of a flowering plants are the root the stem the leaf the flower you have the buds the apical bud this and you have two parts here the vegetative shoot and the main area of the leaf is the leaf blade which is exposed to the sunlight so when we come to the diversity of the parts of flowering plants we go from the root up to the when it, to the shoot system will go up to the flower so among the roots there are two main types of roots first one is the tap root system this tap root system is mainly seen in dicot plants that is branched plants the tap root system has a main root which starts from the ground and grows down that is called the tap root or the main root and from the tap root there are many small roots growing sideways they are known as lateral roots in the fibrous root system many small roots originate from the same point and it starts from the base of the stem so this type is called as fibrous root system apart from those two main types there are other special types of roots as you see here they are not seen under the soil but they are seen above the soil here you see the prop roots of banyan the stilt roots of maize the climbing roots beetle is given as example here and these are storage roots here in the roots food is stored you have examples carrot radish etc 
and these are respiratory roots which help in respiration respiration is done through these pores called nematophores but the main functions of the roots of the plants are given here that is they fix the plant to the soil absorb water and minerals and they help in vegetative propagation so next is the stem so the main difference in stems is whether the stem is branched or unbranched that is the main difference and here you can see a tree with branch stem and this one coconut tree the stem is not branched it is an example for unbranched stem like roots there are special types of stems also in this you can see the special types of stems that is you have the banyan tree with a strong stem the bean plant with big stem and here you can see colored stems and these are stems where which are seen underground and food is stored in them the main functions of the stem of a plant are given here that is it bears flowers leaves buds and fruits supports the plant transports water and food so that means water which is absorbed from the root and food which is synthesized in the leaf they are transported through the stem and they help in vegetative propagation that is new plants are what from stems and aerial stems store food example is sugarcane and some green stems carry out photosynthesis here is it. next when we see the leaves of the plant they also differ from each other in size shape color etc but some parts are common to all the leaves now as you see in this diagram of a leaf we can see we have the stipule the petiole the base of the leaf this is the midrib and you can see veins starting from the midrib and going towards the margin of the leaf blade so the margin that is the tip of the edge of the leaf and the apex is the tip of the leaf so all these together they are called the leaf blade now here you can see the leaf veins parallel venation and reticulate venation in parallel venation you can see the veins going straight they start from one end and they are seen going straight in reticulate venation they have a net like structure the veins show a net like structure the next difference in the leaf is whether they are simple or compound leaves when the leaf blade is not divided into segments it is called a simple leaf and here you can see the leaf blade will take this 
whole thing as one leaf blade it is divided into leaf like parts small leaf like parts they are called leaflets and as a whole it is called compound leaf coming to the functions of plant leaves the main function of the plant leaf is photosynthesis that is they produce food in the presence of sunlight using water and carbon dioxide second is storage of water a good example for that is aloe vera and here you see bryophyllum leaf example for vegetative propagation that is new plants can be grown from this leaf flowers differ from each other in color size number of petals and here this shows an inflorescence that means it is a bunch of flower this is a single flower so it may be the flower may be single or in inflorescence but all the flowers have some main parts in this diagram you can see the main parts of a flower so this is the sepal which is always in green color this is the pedicel that is the stalk of the flower this cup like structure is called the receptacle petal so petal will differ in size the number of petals seen in a flower will differ and color of the petal will also differ from flower to flower this round part is known as ovary and inside the ovary you will see ovules here you see the stigma then this is the style stigma style and ovary all these three together form the female part of a flower that is also known as pistil or gynoecium here you can see the anther which is in yellow color and the filament here anther and filament together is known as stamen it is the male part of the flower inside the stigma there is a small tube running from top up to the ovary here that is called the pollen tube so the main parts of the flower you can see pedicel receptacle sepal petal ovary ovule then the male parts of the flower and the female parts of the flower that is stamen and pistil the three parts of a typical flower is sepals petals the androecium or the gynoecium next coming to diversity of fruits and seeds the diversity of fruits and seeds will help in dispersion of fruits and seeds so they are naturally adapted for dispersion and the method of dispersion of fruits and seeds are shown here so according 
to their structure their method of dispersion also will differ now here you see the fruits and seeds which are dispersed by wind second one the second method of dispersion is by water ericanut coconut and lotus so this third method of dispersion is dispersion by animals here you have tomato pepper and chili So the next main difference among plants that is flowering plants they are divided into monocotyledonous plants and dicotyledonous plants. So monocot means only one seed lobe will be present in the seeds. Dicot means there will be two seed lobes present in the seeds. Now you can see in this table the part of the plant and how it differs in a monocot plant and dicot plant is given. So the main difference is in the seed lobe. The second one the stem of a monocot plant is not branched. Example you can see the coconut tree which is not branched and that is a monocot plant and if you take a jack tree it is branched it is a dicot plant coming to leaves monocot plant has parallel venation and dicot plant has reticulate venation flowers of a monocot plant there will be three petals or its multiples in a dicot plant there will be four five petals or its multiples the root system of a monocot plant is fibrous root system and in a dicot plant it is step root system So this is an example for monocot plant, coconut and this is the mango tree which is a dicot plant. <coughs> the last one is germination of monocot and dicot seeds. So when germination of a dicot seed takes place, there will be two leaves different from the other leaves. These two leaves are called seed leaves. Now in this diagram you can see this is the dicot. Here you have cotyledons. And these are foliage leaves. These are the green leaves and this is the cotyledon. Here the monocot plant you have the first foliage leaves that is the green leaves are seen above the ground here 